welcome to the workshop in Lambeth, London, where Historic England's exhibition, Immortalised, is currently on show. Immortalised is about who we remember in our landscape and how. It's also about who's missing and why, like women and people of colour. From the Alan Turing statue in Manchester to the David Bowie mural in Brixton, to Jane Austen on our five pound notes, and even the temporary renaming of Southgate Tube Station to honour Gareth's heroic 2018 World Cup efforts in Russia, we remember people and events in lots of different ways. Above all, we wanted people to think about how they themselves can be remembered. Our public spaces are often dominated by representations of men on plinths, but around you, thousands of memorials capture the great diversity of our society. Memorials like love locks attached to bridges that commemorate unbreakable love. Statues and monuments can blend into the background as memories fade, yet some memorials become places of congregation. Flowers are left at the Alan Turing Memorial in Manchester each year as homage to Turing's pioneering work in computer science. It's made all the more poignant considering he was a victim of prejudice for his sexuality. Decisions about memorials provoke strong feelings, igniting public debate about whom and how we should commemorate. In 2018, after a public petition, a statue of suffragist Millicent Fawcett was unveiled in Parliament Square to commemorate the centenary of the representation of the people. She is the first woman to be commemorated in this important civic space. Memorials established centuries, decades or even just a few years ago can become the subject of protests as contemporary values, understanding and opinions change. In Bristol, the statue of Edward Colston, born 1636, died 1721, has become a lightning rod for debates about public acknowledgement of slavery, heritage and identity. Historic England invited artists, architects and designers from across the country to suggest a memorial they feel is currently missing. We selected 10 proposals and had them developed for the exhibition. The designs included a 3D illusion with a portrait of the scientist Rosalind Franklin and a famous image of DNA, photograph 51. Her pioneering work received no credit and was overlooked for the Nobel Prize. A monument to over 100,000 British children who were shipped off to the colonies of the empire under the premise of a better life between the mid-1800s and the 1970s. And a plaque to Helen Sharman, the first British astronaut and the first woman to visit the Mir space station in 1991. Immortalisation has the power to help us reconcile with the past, to celebrate greatness in all its forms, and to better understand who we are. Responding to a public call-out by Historic England, people from across the country sent in images of England's secret, unknown and forgotten monuments or memorials. Here are some of their contributions, alongside exhibition visitors' answers to the question, who do you want to remember and how? Finally, we want to encourage you to consider whether and how England's memorials represent the histories you value because memory matters. If you want to get involved, whether by helping save a neglected statue in your area or having a say when a new memorial is underway, visit historicengland.org.uk forward slash immortalised. <laughs>